Hello everyone and welcome! In today's video, I'm going to be building a cool little garage diorama for my 124th and 125th scale RC car models. From designing and 3D printing custom items to simply using trash and a little imagination to create some unique accessories, I'll be showing everything that went into creating the diorama that you see here. These types of projects are always so much fun to make, whether it be a garage, barn, or dealership. Many of you are probably aware of this larger 124 scale shop that I've made videos on prior. This project is somewhat similar to that, but it's much smaller, lighter, and portable. Because of this, I'll be able to take it down to the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo next month to have it on display for the Diorama Build-Off Gallery, as well as have it at our booth to help showcase the various 124th and 125th scale shop accessories we have available for sale. I have quite a few things to showcase and talk about, so let's get started. Many different materials can be used to build the walls and floor of the diorama. I'm repurposing this little setup that was used previously to showcase some of our scale shop accessories. I think once I'm done with it, it will be much more eye-catching. It's made from a few pieces of corrugated plastic, which is often used for making signs. It works pretty well for this diorama as it's very light but still sturdy, also no worries about moisture. It does have a little bit of a line texture as you can probably tell, but I actually kind of like the look of that for the walls. Removing the items that were glued on prior did leave some holes and other imperfections on the floor. No worries though, I took advantage of this and ended up making a drain and a spot towards the center and patched up the other holes which will give the floor a bit more texture and detail. I want this garage to look a bit grimy and worn, so when painting the floor and walls, I had a bit of fun with the spray paint, experimenting with different colors and ways of applying it. Looking back, an airbrush probably would have been handy for some of this, but hey, it just goes to show you don't need one to create something similar to what I have here. It's looking pretty good. The floor looks more like concrete, and the walls look nice but are far from perfect, which is exactly how I want it to look. I wanted to add some wear and grime to the floor and the walls, along with some oil spills, cracks, and other details. Just some black acrylic paint thinned out with water was all I used to do this. I experimented with different techniques of applying the paint and wiping some of it away. You can use real world photos for inspiration. Just that little work with the paint really helps add a bit more depth and detail to the diorama. The walls and floor are looking good, so I'll go ahead and continue by adding some items. As you can see, I've already added a two post lift, fire extinguisher, and hose. Now the lift and the extinguisher can be ordered from our shop, along with many other items you'll see throughout this video. STL files for many of these items can also be found on Patreon for you to 3D print at home. The links are below in the description. Along with the more high tech 3D printed items I've got here, I wanna showcase this very low tech garden hose, which is simply a section of these non-functioning earbuds I cut and then looped. I used a small zip tie to hold the wire together and act as a wall mount, and then I used a silver sharpie marker to color the ends of the hose. That's it, a little imagination and a little work is all it takes to turn random items into parts for a diorama, so always keep that in mind when building. Here you can see a bunch of items I already had on hand which are painted and ready to go into the shop. Again, many of these items such as the workbenches, engine hoist, jack stands, and toolbox can be found for sale on our site. I've simply given them all a quick coat of paint and added a little grime. You'll see more of that process later on, but really there isn't much to it. I've also included a bunch of other random items as well, including some wood and pipe pieces, along with a number of parts from some plastic model kits. Just a lot of random stuff I've collected over time. These shelves here turned out pretty nice. The wood started out looking just like the sheet that you see to the far left but I used some thinned black paint and sandpaper to make it look older and weathered. I glued some random parts and junk onto the shelves. 
That's actually the speaker up top from those same earbuds I tore apart for the hose. This rag that you see here on the back of the transmission is just a little piece of paper towel, which I soaked with heavily thinned black paint, and when it dries, it looks pretty convincing. I can't imagine it will hold up very well to any kind of abuse, so hopefully it makes it down to Florida for USTE in one piece, along with the rest of the items in this diorama. So I've got a nice selection here of items, but I want to go ahead and design and 3D print some additional items to fill up this garage. I fired up Autodesk Fusion 360 and began designing a number of items that I can 3D print. I had a lot of items in mind that I'd love to add, but only so much time to make it all happen, so I chose five items that I wanted to create. Some of these have been requested by both customers and Patreon members, but if there's still some items I haven't made yet that you'd like to see me design, let me know in the comments. All these items were pretty basic shapes, so not too difficult or time consuming to design. I didn't want to have to sink too much time into this diorama build since I've still got some other things I need to wrap up before USTE. I may come back and add a few finishing touches to this diorama in the future, but as you'll soon see, it turned out looking quite nice even without a big time investment. I started out modeling a garage heater that I could mount to the wall near the corner of the diorama. I just added enough detail so that you'll know what it is without going overboard. A more simple design should also be easier to 3D print. Next I modeled a 5 level steel shelf. This has been a highly requested item, and again I kept the design pretty simple so it will be as easy to 3D print as possible. As you can see on the right, I always make sure I have some reference material on hand during the design process, and I look up the real world dimensions for each item. I then just divide those numbers by 24, and I know exactly what dimensions I need my items to be so they are the correct size for a 124 scale replica. I quickly modeled a roll around stool. For some additional strength, I'll use a metal rod in the center instead of the entire stool being 3D printed. After that, I modeled a five gallon bucket. I integrated the metal handle into the design, which I'll be able to use a paint pen to hopefully make it look like metal. The final item I designed was a milk crate. I went into more detail when designing it, so due to its small size and higher level of detail, it will require an SLA or other high detail 3D printer. Just like with the buckets before, these crates will be a nice item to place throughout the shop, and I can put various parts and objects inside. With the design work complete, I then 3D printed each part. Here's a look at each of the new items ready for paint. In addition to the parts I designed today, I also printed a toolbox, cooler, and shovel that I designed in a previous build video featuring that 1980 Dodge Ram Charger. I originally designed those items so I could add some detail to the interior of that truck, but they'll work well for this garage diorama as well. Again, just using simple rattle cans, thinned black acrylic paint, and some markers, I was able to paint, weather, and detail each one of these items. A very simple process, but the results turned out looking nice. It's fun not having to worry about perfection here, and the weathering process is quite satisfying. Amazingly detailed weathering is an art, but just using a little black paint is all you need to do something similar to what I have here. Turning my attention back to the diorama, I'm going to be adding some detail to the walls, first by adding some electrical conduit and outlets. The outlets were designed and 3D printed a while back and don't show the best detail, but it's good enough. The design could use a little work though. For the conduit, I'm just using some flexible metal wire. I added some detail to the outlets before gluing everything to the walls.
Although very simple, I really like the look of these outlets. It's a nice addition for sure. The outlets weren't the only thing I wanted to add to the walls, however. I next glued the heater into place and ran some conduit into the back of that as well. So far so good, now I have a bunch of signs that I want to add to the walls as well. Before I add them though, I put in all of the accessories that go along the wall. That will help me determine where I want to place each sign without them being blocked from view, which wouldn't look right. The signs, as well as some other details like a clock and calendar, were simply printed on white label making paper, so all I needed to do was cut them out and stick them on the walls. The shop is really starting to come to life. I continued by adding some more of the accessories that I had on hand and the ones that I just made, doing my best to securely glue most of them into place. Hopefully this diorama survives the trip down to Florida, at least mostly still intact. I want this garage to have a somewhat grimy and cluttered look, as opposed to the more million dollar race shop look I'm going for with my other scale shop build. It's starting to look the part, but I grabbed a bunch of parts from an AMT70 Camaro model kit, which I'll be painting and adding throughout the garage. When doing a model to RC conversion, you're often left with a bunch of parts from the model kit that don't get used, so they make great items for dioramas like this. Finally, here's a look at the completed diorama. I love how it turned out. Hopefully it proves to be a real eye-catcher. I like all of the little details and parts scattered throughout it. I'd still like to add a few things here and there, such as some tools and some cardboard boxes, but I've got some other projects I'm working on as well, so for now I'm wrapping up this diorama right here. These new items that I designed will be making their way onto our website for sale, and you will find the STL files for many of these items on our Patreon page as well. This was a very fun little project that I hope you all enjoyed watching. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the other amazing dioramas on display at USTE. Be sure to stay tuned for that, but for now, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.